Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part three of our four-part series on building and detailing the Trumpeter 1 to 350th scale USS North Carolina. My apologies for this taking so long, but I came down with a bad case of the flu and I finally got my voice back. The kit's plastic main mast was replaced with a length of 0.052 inch diameter brass rod. To give the rod a slightly contoured shape along its length, I sandpapered the surface while rolling the brass rod. To restore the round shape of the rod, wrap sandpaper around it and rotate the rod while slowly pulling it through the sandpaper. The main mast has now been assembled with the kit's parts. Small shapes for the support braces were cut using a Northwest Shortline chopper and the gold metal model's photo etched details were also added. The kit's forward yard arm was not long enough, so it was replaced with a Tamiya, Missouri yard arm. The photo etched details from gold metal models were then glued into place. The mast assembly will be glued into place after final painting. There is no support bracing for the underside of the upper platform, so 0.030 inch plastic rod was cut and form fitted into place. This bracing is very noticeable in reference photos. To get the anchors to sit correctly against the side of the hull, I carefully removed the stems at their bases, cut the plastic at a slight angle, and then glued them back into place. The gold metal model steps on the photo etch incline ladders are designed to be turned upward so the ladder steps look real. Cut photo etch on a solid surface, such as a section of plexiglass, using sharp blades. Cut as much of the tree stubs as close to the part as possible. The remaining stubs can then be sanded off with a sanding stick. Super glue sticks better to a clean brass surface. So run parts across a stationary piece of 400 grit sandpaper to clean the brass surfaces. Most photo etch cranes are easily bent into shape using a set of single edge razor blades. The one on the left holds the part in place at the fold line and the one on the right is slid under the fold line and then bent up. Bending the sides of a crane takes time and careful work. Get the sides positioned first then slowly bend the top into place. The assembly can then be super glued along the seam line where the brass edges meet. The gold metal models cranes are designed to fit into the positioning stubs located at the base of the kit's vertical crane pedestals. To set the crane cables, drill a hole through the top of each pedestal and pin the cable parts into place with 0.012 inch diameter brass rod. Small drops of super glue were applied to the brass wire and then the wire was carefully trimmed with a pair of sharp wire snippers. The last step in building the cranes was to add the hooks. These assemblies are now ready for priming and painting. The aft aircraft crane has multiple surfaces bent at different angles. Here again, use single edge razor blades to bend the surfaces. Do not press down very hard as the blade can damage or cut through the photo etch bending points. All three outer sides of the aircraft crane are folded up 90 degrees. Next, put bend creases into the aft section so they can be folded 90 degrees up with a pair of tweezers. The outer edges that were folded first will interfere if you try to complete the bends without using tweezers. The crane folds are complete and the edges are flush and ready to be super glued. To keep the folds sharp as they were bent into shape, use a 0 0.062 by 0 0.062 length of brass which can be slid inside the aircraft crane. The crane base was made from a 0 0.03 inch thick piece of evergreen plastic. The strong back frame is made from 0 0.02 inch diameter brass rod bent into a V-shape. Next, add the back end of the strong back using the same diameter brass rod. 
The parts were then super glued together. The last parts to be added were the photo wedge details for the cables and the crane hooks. To help with the assembly of the catapults, I added 0 0.02 by 0 0.02 inch strips to the tops of the frame so that the catapult platforms will have a positive seating for gluing. The catapult sides were then bent up at 90 degrees using a 6 inch straight edge and a single edge razor blade. The catapult tops were then glued into place and the platform parts were cleaned up and prepared for attachment by running them across a stationary piece of 400 grit sandpaper to clean the surfaces. Attach the platform parts first and then bend up the railings. The tiny tabs on the inside lips of the platforms are bent up 90 degrees and then the part is slipped into place and glued using the tiny stubs for positioning the platforms. The center section is added next. There is a positioning hole on the underside of the catapult and in the circular part for alignment and it also needs to be set straight along the length of the catapult. The forward section is added last. Here again, the tiny stubs are bent up and the catapult assembly is slid over the forward platform with the stubs being used as positioning tabs. The upper platform has already been completed and the kit's catapult base is attached. The railings were bent up 90 degrees using two single edge razor blades. The aircraft cradles were bent into shape. The Tamiya, Missouri cradles almost got used instead of the photo etch ones. The two catapult assemblies are now complete and they're ready for priming and painting. To work with the delicate smokestack platforms, carefully tape them to a piece of plexiglass, then shape the railings and glue them into place. The other stack platform had its railings attached, so they were bent up 90 degrees first then slightly curved and then glued into place. The last step was to fold up the tiny railings on the catwalk. The underside framing was carefully positioned and glued into place with tiny drops of white glue. Once the parts were positioned and the glue dried, super glue was added to strengthen the assembly. The smokestack platforms were then glued to their respective stacks. Be careful as the photo etch assemblies are different for each smokestack. The ship will be painted Measure 21, which is navy blue and deck blue, as she appeared in 1943. The forward mast and the radar were slightly different in 1943. Use the kit's mast and make a circular platform for the SK radar. The photo etch radars take a bit of time to assemble, or you could buy a set of Black Hat Models 3D printed SK radars, which are superbly detailed and easy to use. Another backdate was a Mark III radars that were installed on the top of the 16 inch fire control rangefinders. These were later replaced with the Mark VIII radar fire control systems. The kit's molded on framing also needs to be removed in order to install the Mark III radars. Both the front and aft range finding radars were slightly different in size. The forward Mark III was 3x12 and the aft Mark III was 6x6. The radars were modified from a radar seat from Tom's Model Works and Gold Medal Models. This is the bending sequence and shaping of the Mark 37 Gun Director radars. To represent the side framing of the radar screens, glue 0.012 brass rod lengths to the edges and then trim them to size. Flatten the tips with the edge of a sanding stick. The side radars were shaped and then attached with 0.012 inch brass rod. The rod lengths were placed on the back sides of the radars and the inside of the bend between the upper and lower panels. Bend the Mark 37 bases together to help ensure that they are all the same shape and height. The photo etch bases were super glued to the director bases. Then I attached 0 0.02 inch diameter plastic rod to the kit's radar frames and glued the assemblies to the photo etch bases. The folds on the Mark 37 radars fit 
nicely onto the .02 inch diameter plastic rods. Black Cat Models makes a superbly detailed set of 3D printed Mark 37 radars. These radars are much easier to put together and are superbly detailed. Trying to achieve this level of detail using photo etch parts and plastic is just about impossible to do. So I highly recommend these Black Cat Models Mark 37 radars. They're easy to put together. Although gold metal models railings are petite and thin, they are very strong. Cut and trim the railings with the tip of a sharp number 11 blade. To achieve curves on photo etch railings, use wood dowels and the stems of drill bits. Use a diameter slightly smaller than the one you need as the curve you form in the railings will spring back some, resulting in a slightly bigger radius. Careful shaping of the railings around a wood dowel will produce a nice curve with no distortions. To get a sharp bend at a stanchion, position the railings at the bend location inside the jaws of flat nose pliers and use a single edge razor blade to bend the photo edge and get the correct angle. To bend and shape railings for hard to get to deck areas, make a template from the deck part prior to construction. This template is for the ship's horn and searchlight platform. Sometimes it's easier to make railing sections and then join them together. The railings on the back side of this platform were cut between the stanchions. The individual railing lengths will be glued together with tiny drops of white glue. Complex railing lengths can be more easily achieved by breaking them into sections. This approach greatly reduces the amount of time spent bending, shaping, and form-fitting railing lengths. Railings in tight-fitting locations need to be carefully trimmed and shaped. Here is another example of several sections of railings that require careful measuring, bending, and shaping. Sometimes you have to trim the railing heights down as well as along their lengths. Note how sharp the bends are and the railing lengths are very straight. It's easy to distort the railings when bending them, so position the railings inside the flat nose pliers carefully so that the bends will be sharp and straight. The deck railings on the 01 level are getting their final fit check. Be sure that railings on both sides are the same shape and length. The railings should also not interfere with the 5 inch gun turrets. Stay tuned for part four in our four-part series on building and detailing the Trumpeter 1 to 350th scale USS North Carolina. In our last part, we'll do the painting and then the final assembly. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!